This week on The Wire, vacancies tight in most cities, sentiment back near 10 year high, and new home sales surge. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance, investment and more. Our top story for this week, vacancies tight in most cities. So vacancy rates remain below 1% in five of the eight capital cities and are 1.5% in Brisbane. And that is according to a monthly report from SQM Research. Now above average vacancies in Sydney and Melbourne mean the national average rate remained at 2% in February. SQM's Louis Christopher says vacancies edged higher to 4.5% in Melbourne, which remains weighed down by underwhelming demand for rental accommodation. Sydney's vacancy rate rose 0.1 points to 3.3%. Elsewhere in Perth, Adelaide, Canberra, Darwin and Hobart, Hobart I should say, the vacancy rate is below 1%. Now Brisbane's vacancy rate also remained tight, down to 1.5% in February from 1.7% in January. Christopher also says it's very much a landlord's market in regional Australia and the smaller cities. He says investment property owners in Darwin or Perth have also enjoyed a strong year of rental returns, and we are still recording strong interest from tenants in larger properties in other suburban locations as well as wider regional Australia. And now for our next story. Sentiment back near 10 year high. So the Westpac Melbourne Institute Index of Consumer Sentiment increased 2.6% in March with the index now just 0.2 points below the December level, which was a 10 year high. Now the main factors driving the index are improving economic prospects, Australia's success in containing the virus, the promise of vaccines bringing an end to the pandemic and stimulatory government policies. Now the time to buy a dwelling index slipped 3.6%, a fourth consecutive fall to be down 11.9% from the peak in November. Now the report says, we have found this index to be closely linked to affordability in the past, and the decline suggests resurgent prices are already starting to curb buyer interest. On the other hand, the House Price Expectations Index increased 3.1% in March to a new seven year high. That's 12.5% above its pre-pandemic level. Now the index is a lead indicator of the confidence of investors, whose presence in the early stages of the housing boom has been overshadowed by owner occupiers. Now house price expectations are particularly buoyant in New South Wales, Queensland and Western Australia. Moving on to our final story of the week, new home sales surge. So sales of new homes in the three months to February topped last year by 60% as the federal government's home builder program boosted demand for detached housing. And that all comes from HIA's economist, Angela Lillicrap. Now the HIA new home sales report, which is a monthly survey of the largest volume home builders in the five largest states, is a leading indicator of future home construction. Lily Crap says the home builder, uh, sorry, says home builder was the catalyst for improving consumer confidence in the housing market. A surge in sales was observed following the announcement of the home builder uh, grant in June 2020, which led to strong sales throughout the end of 2020. Lily Crap says in December 2020 there was a near record volume of new home sales as households rushed to finalise contracts to build a new home before the end of their $25,000 grant. The full impact of the extension of the Home Builder Grant at a value of $15,000 will not be observed until the end of March, she says. The strongest surge in new home sales occurred in South Australia, which was up 150% uh, I should say, followed by Victoria, 69%, and Queensland, 60%. Well guys, they're the top stories happening this week. Now, please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Have a great week, and remember guys, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that is action. Thanks a lot, bye for now.